He's going to make his debut on the radio, 11-year-old Jack Plunkett, and to introduce him is the one and only Ben Long. Well, I'm just real proud of Jack. He, uh, he started lessons with me through Catherine Brickell Music School. Uh, it was a referral. I worked for them. And, and uh, he's a great kid and real talented. He also plays saxophone. And uh, you know, I'm sure he wants to shout out to his parents, uh, Chris and Maria. Maria and his sister. Sisters, right? Yeah, Olivia. Olivia. And Delilah. And Delilah. And Delilah. So uh, this is Jack doing uh, John Lennon's song with me on guitar. Jack Plunkett just made a phenomenal 
amazing, incredible, awe-inspiring debut. This kid is a star in the making. All right, that was amazing. All right, um, tough act to follow, Steve Vaccaro, but uh, you have the task of following uh, that very impressive uh, young man. But uh, you know, Steve Vaccaro, he has an author with him today, and Steve always brings a, a very important and uh, interesting guest to the show. And uh, tonight is uh, no exception. So let's give it up for my friend Steve Vaccaro. Thank you, Howie. I don't know if I could uh, replace and follow up with uh, Jack there. Awesome job, awesome job. This morning, too, we had the opportunity of meeting with some uh, elementary school kids in Long Beach, and it was also inspiring to see the enthusiasm and the eagerness of them wanting to participate in the essay contest that uh, Howie's put up. But tonight, I have an author, uh, Liz Byrne, who's a resident from Long Beach. She's been living here for over 14 years. She has been inspired to write this book that came out in August. Um, she was inspired at a time where she lost her job um, three years ago. So Liz, talk about that time in your life and the changes and the stress that you went through and what got you here today. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Harry and WGBB for being here tonight. Uh, yeah, I lost my job uh, three years ago um, in that financial crisis. I actually worked in the financial services market, and uh, when everything was collapsing, companies were going out of business, everybody was laying off, and after a couple of rounds of layoffs at my company, I was in round number three. And uh, I was then, and I am now, a, a single mother and sole supporter of my daughter. She was nine years old at the time. And I initially went through what, what anybody would go through at that time. You know, I was stressed, had a lot of anxiety over the situation, some fear, some anger, you know, all those, those real good nasty emotions cropped up inside of me to begin with. But I also realized that it had the opportunity to bring great change into my life. And I took the opportunity to stop and really evaluate everything going on with me in my life, why I had been doing that work for so long, was I happy in the work, was I not, and uh, you know, I, I go to the boardwalk in Long Beach all the time, this is, this is where I go, I go for my exercise, I go for fresh air, I go to see friends, and I had always gone down to the boardwalk, and I took great solace in the opportunity to have more time to take that time on the boardwalk, but even though, you know, it was a time to stop, it took me kind of a long time to actually stop, <laughs> as I say, to stop, because I had been on such a crazy treadmill for so many, many years. And I remember vividly the day that I actually did stop. And I went out for a walk on the boardwalk, and I actually went out without a deadline. You know, I was one of those people that went out to the boardwalk, I was biking, or I was walking, or I was running, and I kind of took in the fresh air, but I didn't really enjoy it fully. And this one particular day, I went out and I took a walk without a deadline, <laughs> which was very unusual for me. And I walked the entire length of the boardwalk and I ran into people that I knew and I chatted with them and I stayed out just for hours and I walked the beach. And when I got back home from that, I realized that I, in fact, had stopped for long enough to really take a look at myself and what I wanted to be and make some decisions about what I wanted to do in my life going forward. That is inspiring. You also, in the book, you talk about a process and the story that you live and that you want to tell. And you also eager to want to change other people's lives. So explain that to the group uh, right now. Thank you. So, yeah, what I, what I realized I wanted to be in my life was I wanted to um, help others in a creative environment. And I kind of started to follow the breadcrumbs, which I started doing some fundraising. I'm very passionate about world hunger and the fact that there should not be any hunger in the world because we have so much. And I started doing some fundraising and working with storytellers and doing some creative work. And I ended up joining a writing group because I wanted to write about it. But I didn't know where to begin. You know, How do you write about world hunger? <laughs> it's such a big topic. And what I realized, though, is what I had discovered for myself was this ability to stop and take a look at what was going on in my life and really decide who I wanted to be and how I wanted to be moving forward. 
And I created a process that's in the book. It's called STORY. It's an acronym, S-T-O-R-Y. And it stands for Stop, Tag, Objectify, Revise, and Say Yes. And I teach people through the book and through other courses I'm developing how to stop in a moment where you're feeling poorly or negatively about what's going on and to look at the situation around you to see who's there, what's going on, and to make a decision if you can feel differently, to make a decision if you can choose a better emotion or a better place that you would like to be, and then to fully own that and move forward into your life. The why is for saying yes to the new way that you would like to feel going forward in your life. And that's what I teach in the book and through an educational series that I've developed. And I really just want to share that with the community. I want to, I'm open to suggestions if anyone wants to get a hold of me, not only through my product, but I'd like to give it away. I'd like to go to community organizations or religious organizations and teach people how they can change their lives by learning how to think differently and, and move differently into the next moment. And your story, going from the corporate world to a creative mind to getting this book out, has um, been inspiring in our conversations recently. But what are you looking to do in the future? I heard about a DVD series, but how can people reach out to you or get a copy of the book so they can also uh, share your experience? Well, I'm actually uh, doing a free giveaway of the book right now. It's a, it's a mini book and it comes with an online educational platform also. You can get the book at my website, which is www.lizburn.com slash free book. And that's Liz, L-I-Z, Burn, B-Y-R-N-E, dot com slash free book. And if you go to that website, you can get a free copy of the book and access to this online educational environment. And it will introduce you to the program and see if it fits for you or if there's anyone in your community that you would like to introduce to the process. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, and I'm sure a lot of listeners out there will read your book and uh, be inspired by that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great job. Let's give it up. This sounds like a great book. Yeah, all right. We're going to take a break a little early so we can get all the segments in after the break uh, nice and crisply. And so we have some great segments coming up. We have the Benoit music scene. We have the Dan McDermott uh, Sports scene, Mayor and Rocco are going to give a recap of all that went down in WrestleMania. And we're going to end the show, since we're in the wild west end of Long Beach, with a original, amazing poem by Rocco Passafume. So we have a lot of great uh, segments coming up after the break. Also, Stacy Meyer should be here with Health, Health and Fitness. So stay tuned. We have several great uh, segments coming up after the break. All right, I am Halftime Hour. This is Broadcasting on the Beach, coming to you from the wild west end of Long Beach, on Long Island's first and oldest radio station, 1240 AM, WG.